Hello and very warm welcome to this brand new edition of the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House and the response given by the government. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat Kane. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to your viewers for watching this edition of Question Hour where we get you the unstart questions asked by the members and replies given by the ministries and departments. So Kriti, let's begin the show. Well, the first question of this edition of the show that was asked a member, Dr. Vikas Mahatma from Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The member asked whether it's fact that less than 50% of hospitals that have been impaneled under PMJ have been active, indicating far lesser utilization of program than expected. What are the reasons and how many private hospitals have been impaneled for cashless secondary and tertiary care hospital? And lastly, whether the government is taking any steps to monitor the number of beneficiaries and allocation of funds for PMJ in state of Maharashtra. And responding to this query, the government says that as on 11th of March 2020, 20,820 hospitals have been impaneled under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Of these hospitals, more than 60% hospitals have provided treatment to the beneficiaries. State health agencies have been advised to take proactive action for activation of all the impaneled hospitals by taking information, education and communication activities, thereby improving their utilizations and enabling quality treatment to the beneficiaries. And as on 11th of March 2020, total of 9,271 private hospitals have been impaneled under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana to provide cashless secondary and tertiary care services as predefined health benefit packages to entitle beneficiaries. And talking about Maharashtra particularly, the government says that as on 12th of March 2020, 3,15,746 hospital admissions have been registered and 67,65,394 e-cards have been issued to the beneficiaries. Now, this information relates to beneficiaries both under AB, PMJAY and the state scheme which runs in alliance with this scheme. And under this scheme, the ratio of contribution towards premium between centre and state is 60-40. In all states, except northeastern states and Himalayan states, where the ratio is 19-10, with an upper limit of the centre. And in case of UTs, the central contribution of premium is 100% for UTs without legislature, while the ratio is 60-40 for UTs with legislature. And joining us on the Quest Now show through virtual platform is Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Vikas Mahatme. Dr. Mahatme, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV and thank you so much for joining us. So, you know, we filter all the important questions asked by the members of the Upper House in the previous session and the response given by the government. And talking about the previous session, you asked a very important question about Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Now, what is your take on the answer? Of course, uh, we believe that the numbers must have revised by now. But what's your response on the answer given by the government? This is the one of the, I think, the only uh, insurance scheme, you can say which is there in the whole world, that 50 crore people are covered under this Aishyaman Bharat scheme. The biggest hurdle in the treatment of secondary or tertiary care center is the cost, out-of-pocket expenditure from the families who are, uh, whose members are suffering from any disease. So what happens? A poor, the poor people will become very poor once a treatment is, once any person of the family member undergoes treatment. Suppose uh, in a family, if a person gets appendicitis. I saw, I have, a, I do remember an incident that uh, the Chaiwala, who Stapri was uh, near my hospital, he, his son got appendicitis. He got it operated urgently in emergency. And so, he needed money, so he sold his, the chai, tapri he sold. He sold his tapri. So what happened? The child got cured. Everything was fine. But they didn't have any source of income. He lost his source of income. So the problem is, the physically, everything has happened very well. But economically, the family has gone down. So, it's a, as far as health is concerned, they are good, well. But as far as economic health is concerned, they have gone down to a great extent. So, it's, it creates a problem. And that is the thing which is solved by Jan, Jan, this Aishyaman Bharat. And it was much needed. And I think uh, 
it is uh, like obama care we can say it's a modi care and it is providing services to nearly 50 crore people so that is the greatest uh, scheme i have seen ever and i think uh, i think it it is it should now get implemented very well so that everybody is benefited because of corona now many means people are scared and especially both ways health wise as well as economically also they feel that going to the hospital will cost a lot but but uh, it really covering this corona or uh, covid disease under this scheme gives you a confidence that even if i get infected and i suffer from this disease at least economically i will be i will not have any challenge so that is the greatest advantage and even for doctors paramedics and police officers like that those who are serving at the front line they are also covered by around 50 lakh of insurance so that also gives a confidence to all these people who are treating the patients as as a front line uh, at the front line they have a confidence that okay i am covered under the insurance so both these things are going parallel and uh, this will create, gives a confidence to the people that government is with them actually uh, definitely i have few suggestions to make because in maharashtra this has been only to government hospitals they have recognized but unless and until we recognize reputed or cghs uh, approved hospitals cghs have already have approved the hospitals so even aishmara and bharat or prime minister jan arogya yojana is allowed to these hospitals are also allowed to serve these people then it will be far better because the number of patients approaching the government hospitals is very high the services it becomes very difficult for the the medical service, doctors as well as paramedical staff to provide services and the beds are never vacant means always suppose 100 beds are there there are always floor beds and uh, so this is the condition with the government hospitals so it is always better even these cghs approved hospitals are also allowed to provide services to these people that will give a confidence to the people that okay the quality of service which is needed and sanman that that is there uh, when you go to the hospital in government hospital the patient feels that he is neglected the treatment part is okay but counseling his questions are not uh, they are not able to answer because of work overload they don't find time but this will not be there with the private hospitals which are cghs recognized so they will have both the things the counseling part they will feel inside that is the only difference what i feel major difference which when you go to any hospital where the doctors talks nicely then only the patients go and as you know patients will go to that doctor who talks nicely that is there who gives confidence to them that okay i shall treat the uh, the best treatment will be given to the patient that is that confidence we will should also be there to the patient secondly more and more diseases should be covered and gradually most important what i feel is the diagnostic centers what happens today the cost of treatment is less as compared to the diagnostic all laboratory diagnosis if you say blood samples urine samples stool sample so many samples are collected biopsies are done so that also uh, taxes the people uh, patients and second is the cost of the medicine that is also very high so out of uh, 100 rupees 90 rupees will go on the other parts other than consultation fee so 90 rupees is on investigations and then the medicine so this has been reduced by jan aushadi kendra but the number needed will should be very high and both should be targeted that okay we will reduce this then i think it will be easily possible for everybody and ultimately we need a universal health coverage exactly every person who ever is indian should have the facilities which are now provided by ashman bharat 
On that note, thank you so much for talking to us and sharing those important details with us, sir. And moving on to the next question asked by member Sanjay Seth, and this question pertains to the Ministry and Department of Space, and the member has inquired whether the government has launched a web portal for better planning and monitoring of government projects recently. Well, answering an affirmative, the Ministry said that yes, a web-based software has been developed in-house monitoring of launch vehicle and spacecraft-related projects. Now, the software provides status information of projects up to subsystem level. The aim is to monitor the project and ensure that projects are complete within stipulated schedule. The objective is to identify the criticalities and take proactive action to mitigate any unexpected delay in the project. Now, no separate amount was allocated for web-based software development. It was developed using available expertise within the ISRO. Initial challenges were to identify activities, mapping the dependencies on external agencies like fabricators, integrating the scheduling of subsystem delivery from the other center, other ISRO centers, onboarding the users and change in the way of working. Now it has stabilized to a large extent. And lastly, a dashboard prototype has been developed for high-level monitoring. Well, moving on to the last question of this edition of the show that was asked by member Vinay P. Sahasrabuddhe from Ministry of Statistic and Program Implementation. The member asked about the kind of new and innovative measures that has been taken by ministry in general or by its various departments of PSUs and autonomous bodies to improve work culture, bring in more transparency and accountability and also enhance result orientation. And responding to this query, the government says that Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation has taken a number of steps to improve its efficiency, enhance reliability and transparency and accountability, and major initiatives include leveraging IT tools for data collection processes and dissemination of data, electronic dissemination of shareable data, report, publications, and also which is free of charge, launch of the seventh economic census and new surveys using technology, improving the monitoring of the Members of Parliament Local Area Development Scheme or the MPLAT Scheme through a revamped portal. These activities of the Ministry are continuously reviewed for improvement in its processes, products and its impact and spread over time includes increased access to cost-free digital data to various users, reduction in time in data collection and transmission and processing as well. Well, that's it in this edition of Question Hour. Thanks for watching Raj Sabha TV. And you can also watch all our shows and programs on the online platform of YouTube. Thanks and goodbye.